LCTR here, and I'm happy to say that the continuing development of Hell Let Loose means that we have yet another update and a reason to check out what's new. But before we start, please do consider hitting that subscribe button if you like this sort of content. But I also want to say that in my normal, full disclosure way, the developers of Hell Let Loose give me access to the game with a Steam key so I can make videos about the game, just like this one. The new Hell Let Loose update arrives with the name Falling Dark, a new arrow in the quiver of unique features to be added to the game. For the first time in the game's history, we now have night versions of existing maps. Not all of them mind, we have night versions of the Warfare game mode, and the specific maps are Foy, Purple Heart Lane, Hurkin Forest, and Kursk. There is new content as well. There's a new map called Dramagen that also features a night map variant. On the face, it's a pretty different and nice addition to the variation of the game, with a large bridge linking the top and bottom of the map, so it's a natural pinch and choke point for some pretty intense combat. As with all their updates, there's a whole host of smaller tweaks and bug fixes, but this time we've also had some more commander abilities added, such as the Stuka dive bomb that fills the map with that characteristic shriek as it attacks the ground. On the new content, the night maps are probably the first thing that players notice. It's a whole visual makeover for some, ow, fairly familiar territory, the likes of older maps like Foy. It certainly helps with the general visual fatigue of seeing the same maps over and over, and they really do look massively different. The devs even reworked some of the visual effects for things like muzzle flashes to look better in the darkness. And on the darkness, in talking about gameplay differences for these night maps, it actually affected the gameplay a lot less than I anticipated. The night maps really function as a cosmetic variation rather than a wholesale step change of how it's played. Observable distances remain pretty much the same. The sky is of course a notably darker hue, but the lighting feels more monotone, but not really reduced. In fact, if you dive into the settings and boost the brightness to 200%, you end up with something that looks a bit like an eclipse or something, like a dark sky, but the rest of the environment is bright. Something like the dense fog that sometimes features in maps has massively more impact. Of course, low light has always been a problem for games. There's nothing much a developer can do if the user changes gamma settings in their video drivers to gain advantage over other players. So these night maps being more about visual variation than restriction kind of makes a lot of sense. In this way, I'm hoping that the devs continue to make night versions of maps in Hell Let Loose, but that comes with the proviso that only if there isn't significant development effort required to do so. I'm hoping that many of these changes could be automated or simplified in some way to make it not arduous to add every map. As much as I like these nocturnal versions, I wouldn't want their creation to significantly impact the amount of time that the devs have to work on reworked or new maps. And on the topic of new maps, you have that newest in the form of Remagen. Remagen? Remagen? Please, if you are German, please let me know in the comments. This is a map that brings some pretty interesting and unique gameplay affecting features to the table. The first is most obviously the large bridge that spans the top axis and bottom allied parts of the map. This bridge is wide enough for tanks to transit, but also narrow enough for it to feel rather cramped and exposed when in a firefight, and as this is the main pinch point at the centre of the map, you're often in a firefight. The bridge isn't just a flat road though, there's a lower slung section for infantry only. It has some variation and means to flank enemy tanks if they're making their way across the upper section. On the north side of the bridge is perhaps the largest hillside of any map in Hell Let Loose, certainly visually anyhow. The lack of trees gives people on top a powerful vantage point across a significant amount of the map. I played one round as a machine gunner atop the rocks and really I could dominate infantry all the way to the bridge. Those long sightlines did highlight a problem that many games have at large distances. In Hell Let Loose, I started to notice some pretty significant LOD or level of detail issues with distant objects, even with settings as high as they could go. Just for those unfamiliar with the term, LODs are simplified versions of game assets like trees, buildings, or whatever really, that are swapped right out for there. the normal higher resolution asset whenever it's viewed at a distance. It's for performance reasons. It means that the highest quality models and textures and so on aren't loaded if, for example, that tree that you're looking at covers just a couple of pixels on screen. We've seen LOD issues before in Hell Let Loose, especially in maps such as Stalingrad, but I'm guessing in that instance it was about clawing back performance in an incredibly dense map. For Remagen, it feels more like the large open areas are showing up settings that work perfectly well in other maps. 
and in the same vein the lack of shadows at long distances were also notable in Remagen in ways that you just don't get in other maps that don't feature such wide open vistas. As there's this different playstyle for Remagen compared to other maps, it feels like a welcome addition to Hell Loose. In the same way that although maps like Stalingrad are often arduous and difficult, there's something to that old saying that a change is as good as a rest. If this was one of three maps, I'm sure I'd find it tiresome after a short while, but in the rest of the map rotation, its unique features shine through more. I like fighting along the bridge and even up the massive northern hill. It felt like a fresh and new experience for Hell Let Loose. I'll admit that often it's a meat grinder of an experience, and that hill does give seemingly quite a large advantage to the northern force. I hope the balance of the map is evened out with tuning tweaks over time, and I'm sure the competitive community for Hell It Loose probably want that more than even the average player like me, but I'm already enjoying Remagen and actively seek it out in the server listings. It feels like a classic Hell Let Loose map, sort of in the making. On the gameplay side, the blend of Milsim and action FPS feels more notable now. It's clear that Hell Let Loose has found its own niche, not just on PC but also on console for its unique take on what a visceral battlefield FPS experience might be. After Squad, it feels more approachable for sure. The floating UI markers above friendly troops mean that the constant map checking that more Milsim games require is much less present in Hell Let Loose. For the smoothing of the gameplay experience that that brings, it's nice for sure. You almost always know when someone is an enemy, but I can't help thinking that a large glowing sphere can take away somewhat from the hard-won aesthetics that the art side of the game works so hard on. As with all these style of games, it's best played in a cooperative way with others, and as such, use of a mic to talk to your squad mates is highly advised. Purely in pragmatic turns too, if you join a squad where no one's in a command role, its members scattered across the map, then spawning in useful positions is going to be much more difficult without a squad leader. And again, as with all these types of games, Hell It Loose, Squad, Postscriptum, Insurgency Sandstorm and so on, the communication and coordination with teammates becomes the heart of these games. Even in overall defeat, you can feel good about how you and your squad mates did. On graphics and audio, Hell It Loose is still arguably the best looking of these Milsim FPS titles. It's a cinematic style without resorting to cliché, and although some people disagreed with this comment in my last squad video, I'd say that the environmental dressing and storytelling that Hell Let Loose puts into all of its maps elevates them to be the best looking. I love the tracks in the mud, the gouge of vehicle ruts, the spent artillery casings, the furnished houses, the forest floor clutter, the crumbled buildings, the snow that remains only in less trodden areas, and so much more. The audio is also good in Hell Let Loose, though I would place the likes of Squad, Postscriptum, Insurgency Sandstorm above it in pure weapon audio. They managed to imbue their sound design with much more impact and drama, a decent thump of bass to portray the pressure being released. I would also acknowledge that part of this may be a design choice on how close to a milsim they want Hell Let Loose to be. Audio with less dynamic range is often less fatiguing to listen to, and like the choice to include visual markers over friendly troops, deciding on how a title is positioned isn't solely just about the core game loop design. But the incidental sound effects, like changing between running on grass and mud, is very well done. It's immersive and certainly plays to the world building that much of the environmental dressing sets out to create. Customization and progression systems in Hell Let Loose are pretty simple compared to many other FPS titles. But in the Milsim world, you'd probably say that only Insurgency Sandstorm does it better. The likes of Squad don't really cover this at all. For the customization, there are rank unlocked variations of faces, headwear, and general clothing. It's not a massive selection, but I find myself appreciative of that gift on the horizon as something to work towards. It kind of feels a lot like the system that they had in Rising Storm 2 a bunch of years back. Also, it means that if you're running around behind an ally with an unusual marking on the back of their helmet, it's normally an indication of their experience level in the game. It's kind of a nice feeling that you can read the players who are around you. There are also DLC packs of new cosmetics for complete changes to appearance. The format seems to be something along the line of one pack is free for everyone, and then the other is a paid option for around £4 in the UK. That's around $5 or Euros depending on your location. This is similar to the weapon skin idea that I was advocating for Squad actually. It's a completely optional and non-gameplay influencing way for longer term players to continue to support the game if they wish to. 
It's not really a forced sale either. There's no constant nag screens or similar that pester you while you play. Player numbers are another area that Hell Let Loose has really found its niche. It manages around 10,000 peak concurrent players during weekdays and more on weekends. It's actually a whisker more than squad managers. If you look historically from when the game first arrived on Steam in 2019, you see a pretty steady growth overall to where it is today. No small feat for a milsim style FPS title. For performance and bugs, well, the performance felt broadly in line with what I recall from last time. That is, I'm probably averaging maybe 80 to 100 FPS on this fairly new system. I didn't think about raw performance while playing at all, which is really all that I ask of a game. On the bug side, it experienced a couple of crashes, but it didn't seem to be reproducible. It didn't bother me that much, to be honest. I also got some hitching at times, guessing that was asset stuff happening, and I don't remember much of that before, but again, it wasn't enough to really spoil the experience of playing. However, that old bug with the camera changing angle is still in the game. It was probably my number one annoyance. If you're prone on the ground and then crawl over a sharp piece of terrain, your camera is tilted automatically. You have to fight to keep it level. I can't believe that their QA department isn't aware of this. I know that it's been in the game for quite a while now, so I'm wondering if this is an unintended consequence of a design decision. Either way, it is, at times, impressively infuriating to deal with and rough for player experience. So, Hell Let Loose, the Fall and Dark update, is it worth playing? Although the inclusion of night maps didn't turn out to be the massive gameplay impact that I was expecting, their inclusion and variation that they've brought has been well worth returning to the game to check out. That we also got an interesting and novel new map in the form of Remagen meant that checking out this update was really essential. For those people who own the game already, I'd say it's totally worth checking out for this update. For new players too, Hell Let Loose provides a unique blend of Milsim and traditional action FPS game that people who came from the likes of Battlefield 2 would certainly chime with. The inclusion of some UI elements make it more approachable than something like Squad, but it still demands and rewards the kind of communication and coordination that these titles thrive on. Despite having a Steam inventory full of games in this genre, I still relish coming back to Hell Let Loose and checking out what's new and getting a new appreciation to what has always made this game special. What do you think of Hell Let Loose? Are you a hardened veteran or a green rookie? Maybe you're a Planet Side 2 player looking for that feeling of organisation in a different setting? Whatever your powerful thoughts and feelings, please leave a comment below right now. Like always, I read every single one of them. If you enjoyed the video, I would massively appreciate a thumb up and a tap on the subscribe button. I'm trying to get that sub count back over 9k and up to that 10k mark as a major milestone. So thank you so much to all of you trying to help me get there. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Take care.